Hello everyone, welcome. In today's video, we are going to discuss about amortized analysis. Before going to see what exactly you mean by amortized analysis, just a few points about amortized analysis. The first important point about amortized analysis is, please note that amortized analysis is not the average case analysis. By now, we might have discussed about the best case, the worst case and the average case efficiency of an algorithm. Wherein, we might have noted that in case of average case analysis, we have taken into account the chances. Chances in the sense, we might have, in, we might have come across the probability of occurring a particular event. So, note that in case of average case analysis, we use probability. But note that in case of amortized analysis, we never use the word probability. So, don't confuse the word amortized analysis with average case analysis. But, whereas in case of amortized analysis, in case of amortized analysis, we more often use the word average cost. Here, what do you mean by average cost? That is, in amortized analysis, the time required to perform a sequence of operation on a particular data structure is the average over all the operation performed. Note that in case of amortized analysis, we use the term average, but it is not the average case efficiency. So, these are the few important points to be considered in case of amortized analysis. Now, before going to see what exactly you mean by amortized analysis, let us take an example uh, operation wherein we will try to differentiate between what do you mean by the normal efficiency and the amortized efficiency class. Let us consider the normal analysis of a particular operation or a set of operation. That means in order to understand what do you mean by amortized analysis, first we will see the normal procedure that we follow in order to analyze the efficiency of a particular algorithm or to analyze the efficiency of a particular operation. Now assume that there is a particular operation that is being carried on on a particular data structure a few number of times. Let me call it as n number of times. That means assume that when I perform the operation uh, uh, on a particular data structure for the first time. For the first time, uh, let me assume that it takes order of n time. Let it take order of n time, where n is the input size. Now let me assume that when I do the same operation for the second time, second time, it takes order of one time, order of one time. In the sense, it, it comes out to be the best case scenario for that particular input. Now, let, let, if I perform the same operation for the third time, let it take order of n time. Fourth time, when it performs the operation, it takes order of n time. Fifth time, when it performs the operation, it takes order of one time and so on. And uh, so on. Now, what you see here is, I can say that this order of n denotes the worst case scenario of performing the operation on that particular data structure. And this order of 1 denotes the best case scenario of performing the same operation on that particular uh, data structure. Now, what I can say from this uh, uh, result is, I can come to a conclusion that the worst case scenario, the worst case efficiency, or the best worst case time complexity is order of n. That means when I when I perform that particular operation on uh, uh, that particular data structure, in worst case it takes order of n time. That means for one one operation it takes order of n time. Therefore, for n operations, this was for one second one. First operation, second. Maybe similarly, when I do n operation, for n operation, it takes, or I can say it should take, I'll use the word will, it will take n into, n into order of n. That is n square. That is n square. And what is the average cost of performing each operation? That means average cost is order of uh, n, that is n square divided by n, n square divided by n, which is uh, n, average cost is order of n, that is what we have stated uh, here. This is in the normal scenario, whenever we perform the 
analysis of a particular operation in a normal way this is what we get but what we do in case of amortized analysis is let me just uh, restructure the same example with respect to amortized analysis let us consider uh, how exactly amortized analysis works on a uh, set of uh, operation let me uh, assume that there is a set of operation to be performed on a particular data structure or a set of operation it might be more than one uh, where n is the input size now when i do that particular operation for the first time let me assume that it takes order of one time now when i do the same operation for the second time i will assume that it takes order of one time third time when it is being performed it takes order of n time now when it is being performed for the fourth time it performs order of one time now fifth time it takes order of one time now if you see among five operation among five operation there is only one such operation which takes order of n time but all the other operation takes all the other operation takes order of one time now what we are supposed to prove in case of amortized analysis is that is in amortized analysis we need to prove that the amortized cost amortized cost in the sense i can say it has the average cost of performing an operation of performing an operation is order of 1 maybe in this particular example okay even though the worst case uh, worst case it takes order of n time there is only one such operation or there are only few such operation which takes order of n time all the other uh, operation takes order of one time so with this example i can say that amortized analysis in amortized analysis we need to prove that the amortized cost or the average cost of performing the operation is of performing an operation is order of 1 not order of n as we saw in the previous uh, case now to put into uh, a simple statement let me write the amortized analysis as yeah i can put together the amortized analysis as amortized analysis can be used to show that the average cost of an operation is small if one averages over the sequence of operation even though a single operation within the sequence might be expensive in the sense if you take this particular example out of the five operation out of the five operation only one operation is order of n but when you take the average of all these five operation the average cost turns out to be very small that is uh, what we need to prove in case of uh, amortized analysis now uh, in uh, in case of amortized analysis we have three different uh, techniques there are three techniques in amortized analysis by name first one aggregate analysis second one uh, accounting method and third one third one by name potential method potential method or let me call it as a potential uh, function so these are the three different uh, techniques that we use in case of uh, amortized analysis now in today's video we are going to see what do you mean by aggregate analysis and we'll take uh, some example to understand uh, how what do you mean by aggregate analysis yeah in aggregate analysis what we need to uh, prove is in we need to prove that all operation have the same uh, amortized uh, cost let's uh, take an example let me take three different examples so first i will take uh, the example of an hash table so in the first example in the first example uh assume that uh what my objective is uh, what should be the that means uh, while inserting an element onto an hash table what should be the size of uh, the hash uh, table
whether the hash table size should be big enough to hold all the elements or whether the hash table size should be as uh, as uh, minimum as uh, possible in the sense if i don't know that means in this case if i don't know or if we don't know the size of the hash table Now what we are supposed to do? This is the problem. That means uh, I before inserting any element onto my hash table, I don't know what is the size of the hash table. Now the solution to this, now to the solution to this is I, I can say the dynamic table. Dynamic table. Dynamic table in the sense uh, the hash table size should grow as and when we uh, put some element, as and when we insert some element onto the hash table. That is, uh, what is the idea? Idea is what is the dynamic hash table? That means uh, if uh, we come across if we come across uh, overflow. Overflow in the sense uh, there is no space. There is no space for new element. New element. We double the size. We double the size of the hash table. And initial initialization is we uh, will initialize that. Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, the hash table size, hash table size is 1. Uh, to understand, to understand what do you mean by aggregate analysis, we will take uh, uh, this example, the example of a dynamic hash uh, table. Yeah, coming to the dynamic table as what we discussed. Now let me assume that I want to insert 1 onto the table. I want to insert 1 onto my uh, hash table. Now what was my uh, initialization was that I have done was uh, the hash table size was initialized to 1. That means my hash table size was having 1 slot to store the element. Now whenever I want to insert 1, this 1 can be inserted onto hash table because uh, we have initialized the hash table size to be 1. Now, let me assume that I want to insert the second element 2. Whether there is an empty slot in my hash table to insert 2? No. So, this became overflow. That means my hash table is not having sufficient space to hold 2. Now, in this case, what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to double the size of the hash table. Hash table size was 1. Now, I will double the size of the hash table. Hash table. To accommodate space for one. Once I double the size of my hash table, what I will do? In the first slot, I will copy one. In the first slot, I will copy one and I will put this two onto the uh, new slot. Now, this was the, after inserting two. Now, if I insert three, if I insert three, whether space is there to insert a, a three? No. Even in this case also, it is overflow. Overflow. Now, if it overflows, what I need to do? I need to double the size of the hash table. So, earlier there were two slots in the hash table. Now, if I double, I will provide slot, I will have four slots. Now, in the first slots, two slots, I will copy the first two elements and the third element will be copied at the third position. Now, I will try to insert four. Whether four can be accommodated into hash table? or whether it results into overflow. As you see, there is a space, it, it will not result into overflow. It will not result into overflow. So, 4 gets uh, 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 filled onto the hash table. Now, if I insert 5, if I insert 5, whether space is there to insert 5 onto the hash table? No. So, this, this results in overflow. This results in overflow. Now, what happens? The hash table size gets doubled. Now, the first four elements get copied and the fifth element will occupy this position. Now, if I insert 6, 
Whether space is there in the hash table? Yes. I will insert. Next. Insert 7. Whether space is there? Yes. I can insert. Next, if I want to insert 8. Whether space is there? Yes. I will insert 8. Now, if I go for inserting one more element, space will not be there. My hash table size needs to be doubled. Now, if you observe that in order to insert 1, insert 4, insert 6, insert 7 and insert 8, I just took a constant time. Because there was an empty slot in the hash table, I, I, I inserted those elements onto those empty slots. But whenever I was trying to insert 2, 3 and 5, as I came across overflow, I need to double the size of the hash table and I need to copy the old elements onto the uh, hash table, onto the new hash table as well as the new element needs to be uh, copied. Now, if you do a general analysis of this particular example, it looks like the worst case, it looks like the worst case of performing, of performing an operation, an operation, that is the insertion operation, is order of n. In worst case, uh, uh, I, I take order of n time, but this order of n is not in all the in all the uh, cases. It is not in all the uh, insertion operation. Only in few operation I take order of n time. So now coming to the aggregate analysis. What do you mean by aggregate analysis? As we know that we don't do we don't take order of n time for all the insertion operation. We take order of n time only for few of the operation. Yeah, let me denote CI be the cost of performing the insertion operation. Note that this CI can have a value of i if i minus 1 is the exact power of 2 or it is having the value of 1 otherwise. Now what this implies is say for example take i as 2 that is 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1 which is an exact power of 2 which is nothing but 2 to the power of 0. Now if you see these are my i's i is been ranging from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Maybe here in the diagram I have just inserted 8. I have taken one more additional element as 9. Now when i is having a value of uh, 2, when i is having a value of uh, 2, c of i, c of i is i. That means when i is having a value of 2, c of i value is uh, 2. Similarly the next uh, i value which is an exact power of 2 is 3. Because 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 is nothing but 2 to the power of 1. When, th when the i value is 3, cost is 3. Similarly, next value of i, wherein i minus 1 is an exact power of 2 is i is equal to 5. That is 5 minus 1 is a 4, 4 is nothing but 2 square. So the cost of performing, uh, cost of performing uh, the insertion operation i on i is uh, i, that is uh, 5. So the next value of i is uh, 9, for 9 it is uh, 9. So this is the meaning of what you mean by c of i is equal to i and for all the other elements apart from i, uh, apart from i minus 1 is an exact power of 2, it is 1. That means uh, if to insert 1, the first element uh, cost is 1, to insert uh, 4 cost is 1, to insert 6 cost is 1, 7 is 1, 8 is 1. That means in order to insert uh, uh, 6, I directly insert because uh, the uh, hash table is having space uh, to insert uh, 6 onto the hash table. Now, note that this second uh, row size denotes uh, the size of the hash table. When I want to insert 1, there was 1 space, the size of the hash table. When, when I want to insert 2, as it became overflow, I uh, doubled the size. So, it is a 2. Similarly, when I want to insert 3, to insert 3, the uh, size of the hash table was 4. Next, to insert 4, it was 4. Similarly, for 5, 6, 7, 8, it was 8, 8, 8, 8. And uh, when I want to insert 9, because maybe in this case, if I want to insert 9, there is no space, I will double the hash table. My hash table will be provided with 16 uh, slots. So, this is uh, uh, how to find the value of CI. Now, what is the total cost? So, let me write the cost of N insertion, N insertion as summation of I is equal to 1 to N of CI. 1 to n of ci. That means all the ci, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 should be added. Now what I can do, rather than writing my ci uh, like this, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5, 1, 1, 1 and 9, what I have done, see here in the last uh, row, I have written ci. In the first row, all as 1s. That is, uh, I need, I need a slot in the 
uh, hash table to insert that particular element. So it is all ones. Now out of this uh, two, if I put one here, I will be left out with one. Hence it is one here. Now in this three, if I use one for insertion, remaining two is here. Now what is this remaining two? Remaining two is nothing but uh, the time required to copy the old elements onto the new uh, uh, hash table. In the sense, uh, when I want to insert a three, as there was no space here, I doubled the size of the hash table and the old values were copied. How many old values were copied? Two values were copied. Hence, two values were copied here. Next, when I want to insert five, four values were copied. When I want to insert nine, eight uh, uh, old values were uh, copied. Now, if you see in this summation of i is equal to 1 to n c of n, there were n. That means, uh, let me take this n outside. This is n ones were there. n ones were there. Plus summation of summation of j is equal to zero j is equal to zero and where where we are performing the extra uh, operation of copying the old uh, elements onto the new table only in this case when it is a two when it is a three when it is a five when it is a nine if you see this cost are one two four eight that is two power zero two power one. 2 square and 2 cube. This is nothing but my j is 2 power j, wherein j ranges from 0 to the max value, the max value, the upper range of j is log n. Upper range of j is, sorry, not log n, it is log n minus 1. Now, this is what, this is n, that is n times 1 plus, and this is, this is once again a geometric progression. This is a geometric progression whose value is 2 power 0 plus uh, 2 power 1 plus and so on until to uh, log, 2 power log n minus 1. This comes to 2n which is nothing but 3n. n plus n is 3n or I can write it as less than or equal to 3n which is asymptotically I can write it as theta of n. Theta of n. This is cost of n insertion operation. Now, if the cost of n insertion operation is theta of n, what is the cost of performing one operation? Cost of one operation is theta of n divided by n, which is nothing but theta of 1. So, this is the meaning of aggregate analysis. Hope this is clear. So, let's take one more example to understand the concept of aggregate analysis. Yeah, coming to the second example, let me take the second example as some basic operation performed on a stack. We know that the most basic operation that we perform in case of a stack is push and pop. So, I will assume that there is a stack. On a stack, I need to perform some n operations of, n operations of push, pop, and let me add one more operation by the multipop. These are the three different operations that I am supposed to carry out on the stack. Now I need to find the amortized cost of performing this n operation, n operations of push, pop and multipop. Now we know that in case of push, in case of push, what is the time taken to perform push operation? It takes a constant time. That is order of one. Now what is how much time pop takes? Pop also takes a constant time. Now, what is multi-pop? Now, in case of multi-pop, it depends upon how many elements we are popping from the uh, stack. Now, say for example, let me consider that uh, this is my stack of size 5 and there are 5 elements on my uh, stack. Now, in, in, this, on, in this stack, if I perform multi-pop of uh, 3 wherein 3 is may let me write okay this function be generalized as multi pop of k where is k is the number of elements to be popped now if I perform multi pop of 3 on this particular uh, stack so uh, it implies that 3 elements will be popped from the stack so if 3 elements are popped from the stack it implies that 5, 4, 3 are being popped I will be left out with 2 and 1 now in this function, if I call multi pop of three, multi pop of three, how many elements uh, 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 will be popped? Even though I am specifying the number of elements to be popped as three, as there are only two elements in uh, stack, two elements gets popped. Two elements uh, gets popped, and I will be left out with the empty stack. 
Now what this implies that uh, note that this multi pop of k k here my objective is to pop pop k elements k elements. Uh, if the number of elements that is k is greater than the number of elements in the stack, then it is fine. It pops out k elements. If num if k is, is, is a, having a lesser value when compared to number of elements, this multi pop of k multi pop of k is nothing but a minimum of n and k, where n is the number of elements in the stack. Please note this particular uh, point. Uh, push operation takes order of one time. Pop operation takes order of one time. Multi pop operation, wherein this multi pop has an argument k. If k is greater than n, fine, it will pop k elements. If k is less than n, then it will pop out okay n elements. N ele it will pop out only n elements. That is, multi pop of k is equal to min of n comma uh, k. Now this is the operation that I have, this, this are the three operations that I need to perform n times. That means totally the whole uh, push pop and multi pop operation I need to perform n number of uh, times. Assume that uh, so this is my push operation, this is my multi pop operation. This is my multi pop operation. This is once again my pop. This is my pop operation. This is a multi pop. This is push. This is multi pop. And once again, this is push operation. So totally there are n operations. Out of this n operation, some operation are multi pop and some operation are push and some operation are uh, uh, pop operation. Now assume that assume that there are n minus l, or let me call let's take it as a, assume that there are l operations of l operations of multi pop. Out of this n operation, there are 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 1, 2, 3, 4. This 4 are L. There are 4 L, there are 4 uh, operations of multi pop. Rather than calling it as 4, I am generalizing it as N. Now, what is the cost of this? What is the cost of uh, uh, this multi pop? In the sense of how many elements are popped? How many elements are uh, popped? At most it is n. You saw that at most it can it can pop up uh, it can pop uh, n uh, elements. So cost of multi pop is a uh, cost of multi pop is order of n. Cost of how many multi pop l multi pop operation. Now, what is the cost of remaining? Cost of uh, remaining n minus l. If total there are n operations and l were multi pop, so remaining n minus l will be either push or the cost of remaining n minus l push and pop operation. Or, or it is how much? The cost of remaining n minus l push and pop operation. Here also at most it is order of n. Order of n. So what is the total cost? Total cost of this entire sequence of n operation is order of n plus order of n. Order of n. So this is nothing but order of n once again. Now what is the amortized cost? Amortized cost is cost of each operation, order of n divided by n, which is nothing but order of 1. So this is the meaning of aggregate analysis. Hope this is clear. Thank you.